two or three or four or twenty five. Praise the Lord. Sort of got two sets of notes here, so that's all the same subject. I'm not going to share it all, but there's a little bit of each one that I just want to share a little bit. You know, uh, has anyone ever taken a step of faith? Have you? Uh, probably some of us have taken many steps of faith. Many steps of faith. And there's been things that, that you have learned uh, through those, that walk, that, that journey that, that God has you on. And, you know, our faith, by it being stretched, it helps it to grow. The, the more that our faith, I guess you could say, is challenged, the more that we depend upon our faith in God, our faith in what we believe, and not, you know, a lot of times in our walk with God, things don't just work out all rosy, and it's not always clear, and you don't understand what's going on, and you just have to have faith, and you, you just have to trust God. That's the only place, that's the only street you can really live on, Faith Street and Trust Street. All the other streets are, you know, that's the only place. Tonight, I want to share something with you, and I trust for the Lord's help. Uh, I guess Suzanne and I, uh, we were married in 1972, 4472, right? <laughs> and uh, she had to think about it, I think. No. <laughs> but, but, uh, no, I, I do, I do. <laughs> See, she always, she gives me a tough time. No, not really. Uh, I'm thankful for how God worked in our lives and in a miraculous way, I think, and put us together. I needed her. I don't know if she needed me, but I needed her. <laughs> and I'm sure every husband and wife sort of feel that way. But we, we sort of been on a journey, and uh, I believe it was about a year and a half after our journey, uh, we, after we got married, we really started on a journey because we were called to move to North Carolina to help start a church there, and we were so young in a certain way, or ignorant, or, or maybe we had more faith then than we do now. I don't know what, what it is, but we, we just sort of stepped out, and we didn't think anything about it. I mean, it just sound, sounded sort of exciting to us. Well, th this journey of faith didn't quite turn out exactly the way that we, or the way I expected it. I don't think the way she expected it. Uh, first of all, you have that picture where you could show it, Chris. When we got to North Carolina, we're, we're, we we find out Susan's pregnant with Micah right before we leave. She was in the hospital. We journey, and about ever so many miles, we'd have to stop so that she could puke and make it sound nice. And uh, I was driving a U-Haul truck, and she was driving our car. And when we got to North Carolina, we... Uh, uh, pulled in, and we didn't know where we were going to stay. We ended up staying with a friend of ours that was in our wedding, uh, a couple of them, a uh, couple, and uh, we stayed with them a week or two, and then finally found an apartment that that apartment cost more than what we made, just that, and we were already making a, a, a new car to us payment. And so, again, like I said, I don't know if it was ignorance or, or God just was helping us. He did help us. There are times that, I mean, what when we got there and they took us to what we thought we were going to help start a new church and we were excited about it. They said it was a barn. Here's the barn. That's what it looked like the first time we walked up right there. Uh, and you could throw a rock from this side of this barn all the way through and it wouldn't hit anything. And you could throw a rock from the beginning. The, the altar and stuff was on the other end. We closed that in, closed the front end. Uh, we air conditioned it and uh, uh, Sort of, it was already air conditioned, <laughs> but but we put real air conditioning in, and it, it it helped in the summertime. But in the winter, we would actually you would actually a lot of us would wear toboggans. We would wear our coats when we sang. We stood up front and everything, and uh, it was a uh, it was quite quite a, an experience. There was a time when we first got there, and it got exciting, and then there was time the new wore off, and that's the way sometimes it is in our walk with faith of a faith. 
oh, it's exciting, and you know, just you really, it's it's great, it's great, it's great. But then you get into the the battle, and you get into the meat of what it's all about, and you get into the challenges, and you get into you face areas you've never faced before that you didn't learn in college that they didn't teach you about, you know, and so. Uh, after I was there a few years, this scripture that I'm going to read, God spoke to me, and I personally could relate to this scripture and, and where, where the disciples and where Peter was in, in a way. And I don't know if you do this, but what I do is a lot of times I try to wear other people's shoes in the Bible, and I try to experience and I try to feel what they feel. And I let that voice speak to me uh, in a way that maybe I wouldn't get it otherwise, because I, I, it, it just helps me to do that. But I want to read this to you. Uh, this is, uh, let's, we'll just start reading it. Matthew 14, verse 22, I'm reading out of King James. And it says, And straightway Jesus constrained His disciples to get on into the ship and to go before Him into the other side, while He sent the multitudes away. And when He had sent the multitudes away, He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down, unto the, down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the winds boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come in the ship, the wind ceased. Then they were in the ship. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, "Of a truth, thou art the Son of God." Like I said, I, I'm going to be using different pieces of paper here, so please excuse me. I don't normally do this, but. Uh, In verse 22, I'm just, what I want to do is tonight, I'm just, I want to go through just each verse and just sort of let you know where God spoke to me and how God helped me here. It says uh, in verse 22, that straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him and to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. That word constrain does not mean he just invited him. It didn't mean that he just said, hey, uh, if y'all would, constrain actually means to employ force. He was forceful in what he said. Force contrary to, to one's nature. So probably it could have meant, meant they didn't want to. Why would they not want to go to the other side? What did they just got through doing? Well, constrain a place of faith. A place of faith is a place where sometimes you might not want to go. A place of faith. For the disciples, uh, it, it was a place uh, uh, that the disciples, they were, had just got through feeding 5,000 people. First of all, they'd, they had gone out and they, were, they had to look for food. They were, he told them, he says, find something for me. They went out and, of course, they found the fish and the loaves and brought them in. And then what does he do? He says, he didn't say, okay, take a break. He said, separate them out, this way, this way, this way, into rows and lines, and then we're going to feed them. And can you imagine the stress that must have been on them when he said, okay, we're going to feed them with what you brought. Can you imagine what must have gone through their mind? Jesus, is that really you? <laughs> Are you sure what's going on here? And, and what, he, what they did, the stress that they were under, see, it was not just the fact that, that, that it was something a little adverse to him, but that was extreme. That was extreme. What would it be? I, I know. I remember. I was in a Shoney's, and I'm not sure where it was at, but you might. Well, you probably won't remember. But we were in Shoney's, and we were going, and it was where they had the breakfast, all the breakfast and stuff. 
and it was real crowded, and people had gone up there. And there's this one lady, she was over there, and she was getting the bacon, and man, she was putting the bacon on her, her plate. And I was waiting for her to, to, get, to get bacon. And well, when she got through, there was like two or three greasy pieces, you know, laying on the bottom. And so I reach over, and I, I, I start to get some eggs. And well, she grabbed a spoon. She starts putting, and when she did, she goes, uh, like she growled at me. And I thought, you know, it's just sort of like a, but, but, you know, can you imagine people, all these people like this in there, and they're hungry, and they're tired, and they're struggling, and, and, and they're ready to go home in, a, in their flesh, and they're, they're hungry, they want to know, what are we going to do for food? Now, they had been there all day long. They hadn't just been there for 15 minutes. They hadn't been there for 30 minutes. They didn't get out at noon. They'd been there all day long. Okay, now you can understand that a little better, can't you? That'd be like maybe we started this morning and we are just now getting out. It was like that. It was, there was a lot of time in there, lapsed in there. See, it's a place that, that, that you don't always have a choice. He was constrained. Don't always say, you know, we, our walk of faith, we don't always have a choice where this walk of faith is. Sometimes we think we do and we try to control that, but no, we don't. We don't always have a choice. It's a time that uh, is not of our own choosing. Uh, okay, when they had got through, what did they do? They had to clean up. And then what does he tell them to do? Get on the boat and go to the other side. I'm sure that they probably thought, well, you know, this is a, this is, boy, this is going, he's going to give us a break. We're just going to have a break, and it's going to be a great time. So, you know, faith is not a place we always want to go. When our faith is tested, it's as if Jesus has abandoned us. Sometimes that's the way it is. That's the way you feel. You feel like God has, when your ta faith is being, when it's being stretched, it feels like, where's God? Where are you, God? Where are you? What did it say here? It said that he went up into the mountain to pray. That he left them. He told them to go out and get in the boat. They're out in the boat, and, and, and what's going to happen? A storm's getting ready to come up. And they're out in the middle, it says, in the midst, in the middle uh, 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 of the water, and a storm's coming up, and he's over there, and they think, what? And see, there's storms in life that, that our faith takes us through. And sometimes we don't understand why we're there, but it's to teach us something. It's, it, it's to, for us to experience something that we would not experience anywhere. As a matter of fact, it's sometimes that's where you find your miracle, as you will find out in just a little bit about Peter. Peter did something that no one else had ever done, I guess, and that was walk on water. Some people maybe think they do. When our faith is tested, we feel like Jesus abandoned. Yet we see Jesus taking care of the multitudes. It said that, that, that he was there with the multitudes. Well, he sends them out. And eventually he leaves, but he also, what he does, he's taking care of the multitudes. And they're out there, you know, they're thinking, well, what about us, Jesus? I don't know. It doesn't say anything in here where they ate. They, had, they might not have eaten. And Jesus, what does he do? See, you're, God will stretch us in a lot of different ways to see how much we are really following. How much of our heart is really there? That would almost seem rude. Uh, uh, a lot of our armed forces, they go through what they call boot camp, and they experience, some of you have been through that, and they don't, they don't, they don't tuck you in at night, do they? They, they? they don't bring your food and feed you in bed, uh, right? Am I right? I, I've never been, so I don't know, but I'm just guessing. Uh, they, you don't get to sleep till 9 or 10 o'clock, but, but you have to get up a little earlier than that. Uh, and, and you don't get to just some, go in and just slop down on the table and just eat all you want. As a matter of fact, I think you all probably only have just a little time, period of time. How long did, did y'all have? Then you, what do you got to do? A lot of you got to clean up. You got KP, just like they did. So uh, Jesus couldn't understand why he was dismissing others and they, 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 here they are, they're in a place. Why, why, why are they not pulled in? Why, why, why is he over there with them? Why isn't he here with us where we need him now? We've been working for him. We've been helping him as a leader. I confess, there's times when I see God blessing people. And I want to say, 
God, and I don't mean money. I just mean, I say, I can tell people are just, and I want to say, why, why, why are God, where are you? How come I'm not feeling that? How come I'm not experiencing that? How come I'm not, uh, don't have that joy, and I'm just all excited? And, and uh, it, one time he told me, he says, that's what I'm trying to teach you. That's what I'm trying to, that's where I'm trying to lead you, right there. You know, uh, Jesus wants more than one to take the step of faith. He sent his disciples, they got in the boat. He didn't see, Peter took that, he was eventually going to tell you, we read it, he, he took that step. I believe he wanted more than one. He wants more than one person or just a handful of people to take that step. He wants us all. But Peter was the one that stepped out. He's the one that what? Had the faith. He's the one that believed. Your step of faith may be in a rocky place. I remember me and Suzanne got in a canoe one time. And that canoe was up against the, the water. And I think I got in the back and then she stepped in. And then she just tilted it over, dumped it over. <laughs> we both got wet. We both got wet. Because a canoe is a little shaky. And, and, and I'm sure the disciples, when we were, went to Israel, uh, we saw the boat. There was a boat that they found after so many years that probably was back in Jesus' time, the way they had dated it back. And uh, it was right, it had been taken off the beach there because they were having a drought. And, and the boat, he said, that's probably what they used to fish out of. And it wasn't a real big boat that they were in at all. It didn't look big to me. I mean, uh, it didn't look a whole lot longer than the one, the, the canoe that we had. But maybe I just saw part of it. I don't know if we just saw part of it. But, but it was shaky. And a lot of times when, when we're on this, we're taking this, getting ready to take this step of faith or we're taking this step of faith, things will be rocky. There, there's not a lot of support around us. Not a lot of things that, to, to, to give us support. Uh, it's a place where our foundation or support, the only thing that's given us support is Jesus. And that's the way it is because our tendency, see, that's where God has to get. He has to get us out here in the deep. He has to get us out in a place where it's shaky. He has to get us out where the storms are because what we're doing, when we're living back here and everything's going good like we've had it in America, we've depended upon things. We've depended upon money. We've depended upon uh, on, on things that, that bring comfort zones to us. You know, we are already, we're blessed we're just blessed people. But this step of faith uh, is not always a place Jesus, uh, it's not obvious that He's there with us leading us, that He even is paying any attention at all, that He's even thinking about, he's, maybe He's forgotten about us and He's going and doing all these other things. Sometimes in this step of faith, Jesus sends us somewhere we think God has something great for us to do on the other side. But what he has for us is the journey. That's where God works this faith in us. It's not what we do in the end. It's not some big ministry. It's not some big great thing. But it's this journey of what he does with us in our heart along the way that gets us to a place to where he can use us and we can be what he wants us to be. Verse 23 says, And when he had sent, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain to pray, apart and pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. The deeper your step of faith as you go, there'll be times when you com it feels like you've completely lost Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk not by sight, but how do we walk? By faith. I was thinking about that. And, and we walk by faith. You know why we walk by faith? And not by sight? Because you might be nearsighted. You know what nearsighted is? You can only see right here. You can only see up close. You can't see what's going on out there. And that's why we have to walk by faith. Or you might be farsighted. You can, all you see is what, what you just got these grander visions of, of what's out there. And, and you're always looking out there and you're not really seeing what's right here. What, what's right around you and what you could do around you and what can be done and what God's wanting you to do right all, all around you. Or it could be you have astigmatism. That's sort of like you've been hit in the head and you're you can't see quite straight. One eye is a little different than the other. Uh, do what? 
Y'all know about that? Okay. Hebrews 11.1 says, For now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence, faith is the evidence of things, what? Not seen. Faith is the evidence. We don't see, we don't have the answers, we don't know how it's going to work, we don't know where we're going to go, we don't know what we're going to face, but, but faith is still holding on, believing we're going to get to the other side. It's going it's to come, it's going to come, it's going to happen. Uh, verse 24 says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the winds, wind was contrary. When you're on your voyage of faith, and you're in the midst of the sea, and in the storm, you won't know which side you're on. You go out, and it said it was in the middle. When you're here, you, you don't know where you are. You ever, when you're walking by faith, you, you don't know where you are. You, well, I'm not on this side. I'm not, I'm not here. Well, where do I go? Which way do I go to, to get back to where I, that security that I feel, to, to the shore, to the safe place? The safest place is where Jesus is. The safest place is where God has sent you. The safest place is where God's will is. That's your safest place, even if it's in the storm, even if it's troubling, even if it's a battle. When little, you have little support, you, uh, when there's little to support you, the first thing that happens is you have a lot of questions. Along the way of faith, you'll be confronting, confronted by many things. It says the wind was contrary. What's contrary? You're trying to go this way. That's the direction that God has, has Jesus has told you to go, and the wind is against you. There is a force that is against you. If you're going to walk with God, if you're going to obey God, there is going to be a force. And that force, you're going to feel something constantly contrary to you. Sometimes that force is something within us in itself, but a lot of other times it's the things out here, the enemy, with that wind coming at us. You have to learn to do something that I've seen. Suzanne, Suzanne has a sailboat, and she used to go out behind our house. And I've never been, well, until I met her, never been in a sailboat, and I'd never seen any, how anyone, but what they, they call it when you're in going into the wind, what do you do? You tack, and, and you go in at different angles. I watched her. She'd go like this and bring it back and forth, and it's like she'd just climb the stairs, but she'd go right into the wind, and it would move her forward by tacking. And that's sort of what we have to do. We have to go into it. It doesn't seem as fast, but we have to face that wind. Uh, verse 25, it says, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. When we need Jesus, there's nothing that can keep him from us. There's times we think that we need him, but he knows exactly when to be there. Exactly. He knows how long he needs to wait. He knows. You say, well, I, I need help, and, and there's no way Jesus is going to be able to help me where I'm at. You ever said that? You, or you ever thought that? I just don't know if Jesus can help me where I'm at. If you're faithing it, you can't keep Jesus away. If you're faithing it, you can't keep Jesus away. Jesus is going to eventually come to you. All you have to do is just wait on him and tread water. <laughs> just wait. Do your part. Verse 26 says, And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried for fear. In this walk of faith, there are times when we're troubled. And that we're at the point, that's what we do. In fear, we just cry out. And we almost just give up. The disciples, they're out there in the storm. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. And all of a sudden, they see something walking toward them. And they don't know what it is. Well, this is death. Maybe this is the angel of death coming toward me. Who knows what they thought? And this is going to be it. And we see it is coming. And their fear overcame them and overwhelmed them. Uh, and our faith, that's when we have to hold on our faith. When you take a giant step, there will be a lot of things, like I said earlier, that you won't understand. And there will be things that you will never figure out on this earth. 
you will never see, you will never ever understand. And that's where we have to learn to trust, just trust Jesus. Verse 27, it says, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. In the midst of this faith test, we become sometimes discouraged and doubt. But you know what? Jesus comes along and he encourages us. That's what he does. He comes along. And what did he say? He said, Be encouraged. Good cheer. Be a good cheer. I think in another version it says, Be encouraged. Can you visualize? Here they are. They're out in the storm. And, and they're, they're thinking they're going to drown. They're out there and the winds are pushing them around. They're probably half falling out. They're wet. They're cold. They're soaked and stuff. And Jesus comes along and he says, Be encouraged. You ever had, it, had somebody, you've been in a place and you've been struggle, struggling and, and you've been in a battle and stuff, and they say, be encouraged. You like to say, would you just shut up? You ever felt that way? Just, you don't know where I'm at. Just be quiet, you know. But, but, but that's what Jesus does. He comes along and he will encourage us if we will allow him to. Verse 28, it says, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto the water, come thee on the water. When you take a step of faith, one thing you need to know, whatever it may be, whatever direction it might be in your life, when you're taking that step of faith, you better be sure before you step off that that is God bidding you. You better be sure. Because there's been a lot of people that that wasn't God at all, but that was just a desire. That was just what they wanted. That was just the vision they had. And it wasn't really. Be sure it is God bidding you to step out in faith in that area and saying, come. When you totally step out, it says here, and he said, come. And when Peter was come out on the water, out, come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. When you have totally stepped out on faith, there is nothing to support you, okay, or rest on. All you have is just to know that Jesus said, come. When I moved here, I had nothing to go on other than I know Jesus said, come. I know, I know, I knew. I prayed and waited a long time before I came here. But I knew that that's what God wanted for us. You see, do y'all know what an acrostic is? I think that's what it's called. It's like where you take, uh, like I'll give you an example, forsaking, the first letter, all, the first letter, I, first letter, take, T, first letter, him, First letter spells faith. That's what faith is. Forsaking all, I take him. That's faith. Sometimes it helps to have someone in the same boat you are. Is that true? But you know what? There's times when you've got to step out of the boat, and there's nobody there except Jesus. Except Jesus. But you know what? Like I said before, that's a good place. When you take the step of faith, keep looking up. You start looking down at troubles and difficulties, and you'll sink and you'll drown. Verse 31, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? After your step of faith, Jesus lets you know lets us know our needs. After our step of faith, it says, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, caught him, and said unto him, O thou little faith, you're lacking in faith. He's telling him he's lacking in faith, and he just stepped out on the water and walked on the water. Where are we? Where are we? But he says, if we'll just have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, we can move mountains. That even makes us feel like, well, maybe we don't even have a clue about this faith thing and what faith can really do and what can happen if we'll just have just, just a, a little bit of faith. Verse 32, And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. 
The storm is just part of the test of the step of faith. That's all it is. It's just part of the test. Some of us here are, are, have gone through Some of us are going through tests now. Some of us are going to go through tests. And all it is, as Jesus said, it's just a test. It's, it's a test. It's a test of our faith. So what does faith do? What does it do? What does it do? Hebrews 11.33 says, Then they that were in the ship came down and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the Son of God. What does faith do? Well, faith will open the eyes of other people. Your faith will help other people see the truth. It will help other people recognize who God is. Our step of faith increases others' faith. 1 Peter 1, 7 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if it need be. Boy, I've, I don't know how many times I've, I ought to have this memorized. Just for a season. I've always prayed that my season would be over in some areas. You ever prayed that? I have. I said, God, is my season up? Is, is this the end? Is this when the leaves fall and new things start coming out in my life? You know? It says, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. That word manifold means many temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You know, we need to get to the place to say, hey, God, and say it with very humbly to him, whatever you need me to go through to help me to get where I need to be, by God's grace, I'm willing to go with you. Jesus in the garden, his flesh, I don't think he really wanted to hang on that cross, the human part of him. But he knew, and he said, he, said, he says, if it would, may this cup pass from me, but if not, if not, I'll do what you say. I'll do it. And that's where we need to get. And it is we, whatever it takes, Jesus, to be able to uh, fulfill in our life. It says, uh, it says in Hebrews eleven thirty three, and this, is, this really stirs me, talking about faith. And this is the roll call of the faithful here. The 11th chapter of Hebrews is called the roll call of the faithful because it lists all the people, it lists the faith that they had and, and the results of that faith. And it says in verse 33, it says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Did, we, did I hear that tonight? Did somebody pray that or somebody say that? I heard that today. Wax valiant in fight. Turn to flight the army of the alien. Faith. Faith. Tonight, I, I wanted to share this. Uh, I can testify that if you'll hold on, if you'll hold on, your answer will come. If you'll hold on, in God's time, He will deliver. He will, I believe He'll give you the desires of, of, of your heart according to His will. I believe God's way is best. There's a song in our hymnal that says, God's way is best. Charles Naylor wrote it. God's way is best. And we have to be at that place. Let me let me, uh, we have a hymnal. Is there an old hymnal here somewhere? The brown one. I think. Maybe this is it. It's in here. I want to read the words to this. This is a, a hymn that has really blessed me and helped me. 652, if you want to follow. Charles Naylor was a man of God. 
he uh, is a singer, I believe. Am I right, do you, Carol? Are you you're, are you sure? Uh, I think he was in music, a singer. He was for sure was a preacher, and, and uh, was involved in evangelism. And I believe he was might have been in an accident, or or uh, something happened. Oh, what what was the number? Six fifty two. Okay, and we're, we're talking about faith, and we're talking about God's will. God's way is best if human wisdom. Sometimes that's what we go by. We, we go by human wisdom and not God's wisdom. It goes along with what we're talking about this morning. A fair way may seem to show. It's only that our, own, our, our earth-dimmed vision, the truth can never clearly know. The second verse said, Had I the choosing of my pathway... In blindness I shall go astray and wander far away in darkness nor reach the land of endless day. He was bedridden the majority of his latter years, mid, early years, all the way through. He leads me true, I will not question. Though through the valley I shall go, though I shall pass through clouds of trial, and drink the cup of human woe. God's way is best. Oh, out in that storm, we don't think so. Oh, out there when it looks like we're sinking and we're going to drown and we're going to lose everything. God's way is best. Jesus told us, come out here, but but God's way is best. God's way is best. I cease, oh, cease your struggling. That's the key. We got to just stop struggling when, when we're we're in that storm when we're there. Just rest in Jesus. And that's something I have to work on all the time. To see and to know and understand. Forsake your fears and doubts, but trust Him. Submit yourself unto His hands. Your way is best, so lead me onward. My all I give to your control. Your loving hand will truly guide me. And safe to glory, bring my soul. And the Course says, God's way is best. I will not murmur. I wonder the disciples, when they were out in the boat, and the boat was being knocked around, and they didn't think they were going to I wonder if they murmured. I wonder if, can you believe Jesus sent us out here? I wonder why he sent us, where's he at right now? I just, you know. Although the end I may not see. see Jesus, he won't tell you the, what the end's like. But if he told you, it wouldn't be faith. It wouldn't be faith. Where'er he leads, I'll meekly, he might want to look that word up, follow God's way is best, is best for me. Here's a man that all the things he went through, and he's saying, I don't understand all this, but I'm not going to try to. God is God, and I'm going to trust him, and I know his way is best. And I know that he's going to teach me, and I'm going to learn. And I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to be able to be a better person for other people because of what I went through. And uh, in some of the areas of my life, and I don't, you know, I don't have it bad like a lot of people, but, but to me it was bad. It was, it was a struggle. It was a battle. But uh, I, I wouldn't ever want anyone to experience some of the things I experienced. But you know what? And I would never want to go back and do it again. But I'm thankful I went through it. And that's the key. We've got to go through it. We've got to go through it. By faith, we can. Not by sight. Not by feeling. Not by flesh. Not by our own desires. But just by faith and trust and following. Let's stand. We have to trust and obey. Trust and obey. Does anyone have anything on their heart? Keith, would you come up and pray for us, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day again, Lord.
Thank you for letting us come here and worship you, Lord. Give us the faith we need through you. I know it's there. Let us trust in you, Lord. And let, just let us, we need your guidance. Thank you for your strength. Yes. And your blessings, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name, amen. Amen.